Democrats may have seen a glimpse into the future of their party and the next generation of Democratic leadership. The impeachment managers, some who were largely unknown on a national stage just one week ago, are getting back to their day jobs, but this time with a lot more buzz around their names, despite the fact that Trump was not convicted. One of those lawmakers, Delegate Stacey Plaskett, who represents the United, uh, the U.S. Virgin Islands, joins us now. Um, thank you so much for being here. You took on former President Trump on the national stage. I said it, a lot of people didn't know your name before, and now they do. You have gained trust and attention of a whole lot more people in the last week. So what do you do next? Yeah. Well, we, we do the same thing that we were doing during the impeachment. Um, what people didn't see behind the scenes is that you're aware, Stephanie, that there was a markup of a budget and reconciliation. So while we were speaking on the floor, oftentimes I would go back into the conference room and have to present and have to vote on matters and markup on the committee that I'm a member of, Ways and Means. Uh, and so I think most of us are going back to our day jobs, right? We're going to continue to do the people's business in every way we can. Uh, all of us who were impeachment managers really saw it as our duty to our country. We really felt that we were in service to the country uh, to take on the role that Nancy Pelosi was so gracious in nominating and offering to us. Uh, but at the same time, we have the continued work of our constituents. Um, may I just say, Stephanie, I want to thank you so much for bringing up the issue of children and distance learning. Uh, before being an impeachment manager, one of the issues that I was really championing with Abigail Spanberg and James Clyburn was not just distance learning, but those individuals, those students, who don't have broadband, who aren't able to do virtual learning. What are we going to do about those students in both urban areas where people are underserved as well as rural areas? So for a lot of us, we're going to continue the work while at the same time uh, ensuring through our, our democratic process and through the commission that Speaker Pelosi is putting together that what happened on January 6th doesn't happen again. Well, let's talk about how you're going to do that with Republicans and how you read their next move. Because we've already seen Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell on Saturday made a scathing speech on the Senate floor after he voted to acquit. He went after the former president, you could say even more harshly than some of your fellow impeachment managers did. Yet today he's out with an op-ed defending his decision to vote to acquit, where he wrote this, I was as outraged as any member of Congress, but senators take our oaths our job wasn't to find some way, any way, to inflict a punishment. The Senate's first and foundational duty was to protect the Constitution. So he basically said Trump was guilty, but this is about the Constitution, and he didn't violate that. Do you buy any of this? What a bunch of baloney. Um, that's, that's all I can say on TV right now to something like that. I mean, first, the, in the first instance, the reason we brought the trial when we did and it was not earlier was because at the time that the uh, impeachment was passed on the House side, Mitch McConnell was the majority leader and he refused to allow the Senate to be in session for us to bring the impeachment articles over while the president was in the office. As you saw, the trial only lasted a week. We would have had this done before January 20th and the inauguration. Secondly, to use a, a, a justification saying that you cannot impeach a former president when that was resolved in the first instance on the first day of the trial with a motion and that there are so many experts on both the left and the far right who said that it was totally within the Constitution that the Founding Fathers anticipated an individual leaving office at the time that they had done something horrific, resigning or walking away, and that we still were able to reach him. So just hypocrisy to justify his need to retain power. But let's talk about the American voter, because a lot of those Republicans who voted to acquit, they don't care for President Trump. But their number one goal is to get reelected. What is your take when you hear about people like Bill Cassidy being censured by his own state, the state of Louisiana, which in 1989 didn't censure David Duke, the former Grand Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan? What does that tell you about many of our American voters? 
It tells you something about the base of that party uh, and what is really brewing within it. I think Donald Trump was just able to galvanize. He recognized that fear, that hatred that's within uh, certain individuals and pulled it into himself um, to be the maniacal person that we saw in the president of the United States as number, president number 45. And so I think there needs to be a reckoning. I've continually said that we have got to call it out. Um, We've got to be transparent about what's happening. Uh, that's why there were certain instances where I felt it was necessary to call what they were doing race baiting and gaslighting, um, uh, you know, dog whistling. And I think that that need for power um, far outweighs for them their constitutional oath and doing what's right. Um, and so I'm really prayerful for individuals like Senator Cassidy, uh, you know, Jamie Herrera Butler, who was able to stand on her own two feet and say what was right. Uh, individuals who have love of country before love of office and who potentially probably have full lives so that being a member of Congress is not the only thing they can do. But this isn't over. Nancy Pelosi has already said she wants to set up an independent commission, a 9-11 style commission to figure out what in the world happened on January 6th. How did it happen? Will you be part of that commission? Oh, well, I have not been asked to be part of that commission. I'm really hopeful that this is a very independent uh, commission. You know, potentially individuals who were uh, retired judges, uh, cabinet members from various sides, experts who are able to dig into this. You know, my hope is not only do we find out the security issues, but the hatred that is lurking within um, that has caused something like an insurrection the attempted coup of our democratic uh, government. And so I'm really grateful that uh, Speaker Pelosi is putting this together along with others in leadership, uh, Senator Schumer and others. And let's pray that they get not only to the bottom of what happened on that day, uh, but the factors that led to what we saw on January 6th. Well, we will keep digging and asking. Ending this impeachment trial does not end the situation, not by a long shot. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Coming up next, crews in Texas are racing to restore power to millions of people in dangerously cold temperatures.